United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Has everyone had a moment to review the, the minutes, and do I hear an approval of said minutes? Yeah. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Do we have any one out in the public that would like to provide input on agenda items? Hearing no public input, we'll move on to number two, streetcar system performance report for August. Good afternoon, Richie car system for uh, heart during the month of September we had some equipment failures resulting in the 43 uh, lost trips those problems have been rectified we uh, had some serious sit-down talks with the vendors which uh, has resulted in the completion of deliveries and no failures since then we had two small accidents none resulting in personal injuries and we provided extra service for Labor Day and uh, two charters. All maintenance is being done on schedule, and that's my report. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Um, concerning the equipment failures, were they uh, a one-time instance, or is it... Um... Excuse me, one-time instance, or is it, it indicative of some of the machinery getting past its uh, sale date? Actually, uh, actually, it was neither. We had uh, motor overhauls uh, with a vendor that was not a good supplier to us, and they were causing failures. Uh, they've been blocked from bidding with us in the future. Mm -hmm. So that problem's been eliminated. The second one was the inverters, which is the propulsion of the car, taking the 600 and converting right. it into other power. Mm -hmm. And those were actually the manufacturer. And they had some quality control issues. Uh, to rectify it, we sent units back. They actually put a technician on site to resolve the problem. And we've asked for a redesign uh, of some of that equipment, which they have uh, promised that they will do. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Excellent question. Uh, legal and legislative, please. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, four items to talk about. The first is the transition. Uh, I met with the city's attorneys uh, approximately 45 days ago. Uh, the discussions were about what would be the best way to kind of implement the transition. I think we agreed that we would go ahead and prepare the plan, have it ready to go uh, when we got direction from the city that it was time to complete the dissolution process. And in the meantime, we, we're going to maintain the status quo. Uh, so that's where we are on the transition. With respect to the advertising contract with Direct Media Inc. I spoke with Mike Geddes. We agreed that the simplest thing to do would be to do a one-year extension on the existing uh, contract. Uh, we'll probably may have to arm wrestle the rates with them a little bit, but uh, we did extend it once before, uh, and um, that's going to be the simplest thing. That'll enable us to maintain um, the agreement. The new agreement will be assignable. So. If, in fact, the dissolution occurs during the term of the contract, we'll be able to have it assigned uh, to the city. And uh, so that's the advertising contract. We should be in pretty good shape there. I don't see any disruption of, of service there. With respect to the CSX policy, Grant Mellich is proceeding on the premise that we will need to renew it in the name of THS come February. Um, and I think as part of that, the, the feeling was that at this point, uh, the best thing to do is to go ahead on down the path of renewing it. We think that we may be able to get some further reductions in the premium rate, uh, which would be helpful. And uh, so Grant is, is going to be negotiating with, with the providers to try to get us the best deal. Uh, and then what it will potentially mean is, is that, uh, at least on the theory that you don't want to change horses in the middle of a ride, on the CSX policy, it may mean that effectively the dissolution would have to be effective a year from this February as opposed to this February, which was the original idea. Um, but I think at this point, the, the best thing to do is to just maintain the status quo. 
The last item, um, which is not on the agenda, but which I need to bring to your attention is, as I mentioned before, um, THS and the city were sued uh, for personal injuries um, on the part of a Ms. Palin who uh, tripped on uh, coming out of one of the streetcars. And uh, that lawsuit is currently pending. We received a settlement offer uh, from the other side. I'm not gonna get into a lot of the details other than to say at this point um, that uh, I spoke with our insurance counsel, uh, also spoke with uh, the city's attorneys who are co-defendants in this case is, uh, with the idea being, hey, you know, is there some way that we can resolve this case? Uh, their unanimous recommendation was wait until after Ms. Palin has had her deposition taken, which is going to be in December. So what I would ask the board to do here is to, is to um, adopt a motion deferring action on the settlement offer until uh, it would probably be either the December <coughs> or January meeting, at which time we will have a better idea of the extent of the injuries. Um, that she has suffered and the merits of, of any claims that she may have against either the city or THS or both. Okay, thank you. Do I hear a motion to defer yeah, action? Move, move okay. to defer action until after the uh, plaintiff's deposition is taken in December. I'll second it. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Okay, carried. Motion carried, thank you. Thank you, and uh, Madam Chairman, that would conclude my report. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And Ms. Egan is not with us today. Does anyone have an update? Um, would you like to give an update, Ruthie? Just, just briefly, um, two things. The Streetcar Fest was held this Saturday to um, very nice attendance. We're still scrubbing through some of those numbers. Um, but we do think that we're an estimate in excess of 5,200 rides for this Saturday during the streetcar fest. Um, we don't have the comparison from last year, but we'll update the board with that in the next um, meeting. And we did see a lot of activity and maybe some other ideas that we come up with for how we do this next year, maybe improving upon taking a little earlier to enhance the experience for those customers that wanted to attend some of the festivities that started earlier than our service. And then the other thing is we will not have access to this location for next month's meeting in December. So if anyone would please assist and offer a location for us that we could meet. Um, uh, Lena has already checked through the various entities here and in the city. So we'd be looking for a recommendation, a boardroom or someplace where we could meet and have our next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Abby, of course. Um, just for clarification, you said next month, but then you said December. December. Uh, okay, so in two months. Yeah. I'm sorry. Right. I, I just want to make sure. Yeah, I meant December. Sorry. Okay. And for the boardroom, you're trying to stay down in this area, right? Well, we're happy to visit Bush Gardens if you'll take us there, and I don't okay. know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's my personal statement. Don't retract that. <laughs> Thank you. Ruthie, I think I, I'll check with our district office on Davis Island because um, our board of trustees does have the uh, microphone set up. Okay. It does not have monitors or anything like that, so you'd have to Projector. bring that in okay. if you needed it. We could, thank you very much, so. Thank you. Thank you for your update. I see we have Ms. Lori Gage here today. Would you like to give us a direct media update? Um, good afternoon, Lori Gage, direct media. Um, happy to hear that you're recommending that we stick around for another year. Um, Really, the only thing I have to report, uh, Miller Coors is going to continue. They're going to take two wraps for the entire year, so that kind of doubles the revenue that we got this year from them. So I'm excited to do that. That's really about all I have for today. Okay. Okay? Thank Any you. Any questions? Thanks. Thank you. Number four action items. The action item is for approval of streetcar service suspension for Louis Vuitton filming. I'll, I'll just introduce Richie. 
Um, for the benefit of the board, the original request was for 27, the October 27th and 28th, and I recognize that short notice. The company, the media company that was working on this had to work through their details in getting permitting through the city, so it was a bit of a late request, but in time for this meeting and certainly in time for their event. They've since amended the request for just strictly Monday the 26th. I think during the same service, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. or something hours, and Richie, you can clarify as far as what exactly was the request. Uh, their request is actually to suspend the service, and it's going to be from the streetcar barn out to Centennial Park during daylight hours. So you're talking roughly 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. or uh, 7 a.m. to 6.30 p.m., 6 p.m., Some, somewhere in that area, we, uh, we can actually, ref the number can be refined, but that's basically it. Uh, they're basing the, we're basing the request on the board policy where the, uh, previously we've shut down for Gasparilla for the parade and that was the same type of seven hour duration. And we received this request and felt that it was appropriate for the board to make the decision on uh, the service suspension. If I may just also add to Richie's statement is that we would supplement the stops that are impacted by the cessation of service from Kadrisha through Centennial with a bus bridge or bus um, through those stations so that we can get customers still transported through there should they want to continue on through the line. Is, is it noise? What, what's their concern about the streetcar? The, the problem is that the streetcar cannot go through the blockades. That's the main piece. They're shutting the streets. No, so it's, for, a, for the so filming? it's a de facto because the Tampa police already approved it. They proved the street closure. Oh. The secondary piece would, of course, be power. That if you're using overhead booms or things like that, that you might engage the wire accidentally. And in that case, if if they were we were able to go through, we would be able to obviate that by having staffers there. Mm -hmm. But the, the the city police is closing the street, Central Ybor area. Um, as I understand it, this is <clears throat> from the the film commission has requested this, and this is this is a private shooting by Louis Vuitton. Correct. Is, that, is there they fit, they're filming something privately? I believe it's a commercial. Okay. So my question is, uh, how do we supplement the loss potential loss of revenue uh, for this shutdown? I mean, I don't mind shutting down for city events. I don't mind shutting down for things that the community benefits from, but a private entity. In particular, an entity like this has got more money than they could possibly want, in my opinion. Uh, how, how are we being supplemented for loss of revenue with that? Because I feel if a private organization comes in and requests this, there should be some, some kind of restitution to us to both supplement the revenue loss and be able to supplement the additional service that we're putting on. I really believe that that is important. We require them as part of the approval process to pay for the substitute bus service. There's no, there's no question about that. That was a, a given, because it's not some kind of a nonprofit benefit type of thing. It has nothing to do with us. It has nothing to do with Ebor City. But what about? Uh, do we have any estimates about potential loss of revenue from that? I mean, from shutting that service down for an entire day, basically. I don't. I'm sorry. Uh, we we don't have an estimate of what that linear portion of the route would, if you will, Im be impacted by any ridership and or um, fare collected, but um, we deduce that we would we could supplement what is achieved through the bus bridge or the buses running through there and supplement that back to the streetcar system as part of it being a part of supplementing the ride that day. So in essence, as if the customer is continuing in ride from Kadrisha through the end of the line, their fare was collected on the front end of it. If they were looking to ride from some portion of beyond Kadrisha at the next station through Centennial, the bus bridge could pick up that fare and it could be supplemented back to the streetcar system in that respect. And as Richie indicated, Mr. Bauman indicated, we are charging them the fare for the bus bridge part of it, so it's not at cost to THS. And we could recover the fare through the buses. Uh, the other piece is that it's on a Monday, which is a low fair day for us. And through 7 p.m. So it wouldn't be the entire night, and the system doesn't start till 12 noon. 12 noon. So it's. 
partial day. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I had a, my question was, um, could you elaborate a little bit more on the bus bridge uh, and how that works? And as far as since the, the, the streetcar would still be operating south of the barn, mm -hmm. uh, does that change the frequency at all for that? And who, going back to the bus bridge, who, who drives those buses? Is it Hart or is it our motor car men? Or um, what happens there? And uh, basically, I guess, you know, if they're driving shorter routes, what, what's happening with the driver, the motorman? Okay, so the, the same number of motormen will be on. The frequency is established to stay the same departing Kadrisha going south to um, Dick Greco and, and mm -hmm. Whiting in the same frequency that it currently has. The motor, there's no displacement of the motormen on staff. We still have 20 minute frequency during that time of the day. And so those three vehicles would be going in, in their movement as they normally would just from Kadrisha South. They may have a staging piece at the barn in order to get back on time um, and, and turn, if you will, get back in motion going back south. Um, and the folks driving the bus bridge, if you will, those are bus drivers, not motormen. Mm -hmm. um, they would probably be from our extra board of operators that are working and we are running them uh, along the adjacent closest location so if we're not able to serve 8th Avenue because it's closed we would run along 7th Avenue serving through the similar state but similar stop location but one block away and our marketing and media folks would probably f Facebook and Twitter our information about where to catch the bus that will take you through the next stops through the line in alternate of the track and we also have the on um, at the stations, we can post notification to go one block over a detour, a streetcar and detour, so to speak, to catch our buses along 8th Avenue, 7th Avenue. Okay. Thank you. Thank you both. I have a, a question. And sure. You, you mentioned all these additional uh, things that staff are going to have to do. That's an mm -hmm. additional cost beyond mm -hmm. just having the, the bus mm -hmm. and the driver. So I don't know, is that factored into what this is going to cost? I don't know how much the labor is to do Facebook, to do this posters. Mm -hmm. Um, whatever I, I don't know that we've ever priced out the Facebooking time that's of a frame. hassle yeah. now for yeah. us and yeah you know, we're not getting um, anything well, normally really. when we have an event on the streetcar just like on bus our 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 media person Frank Wazinski he's actively tweeting and engaged in that process and um, putting together media release um, flyers are not cost prohibitive because we're talking four stations that we're impacting and that we could post something at, and then it's also just the use of our technology to get that messaging out. As far as the cost for the bus bridge, that's already been accounted for in terms of what the filming company is. Right, I'm, I'm fine with that part, yeah. but it's all the other incidental costs. Absolutely. You know, you've got somebody that's now not doing their normal job to make a flyer up. Absolutely. Or somebody that's going to have to put it up. <laughs> absolutely. You know, then I don't know what people get paid per hour, but it's not zero. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. There, there, there is, there is some outlier costs with supporting events like this and, and situations like this. Um, in, in a sense, and I'll just say this from the perspective that the city has given permission already for closing of the street. In, in response. And in, and in essence, we're coming to the board belaboring, asking for the motion to cease the service when the city has given permission to this filming studio to close the street to film. If, and uh, I know that that's uh, back, it's yeah, kind of backwards. Right. I, I know that it is. We would have liked to have seen it sooner, but while they were working through the process of getting their permitting, it took some time for them to come back and make the request to us to say, oh, and by the way, we need you to see service. Uh, right. but but either for this, if there's a way to add on to say hey, the cost is really this to THS, Hart, whomever, right. and for this, obviously we're not going to stop the city police from mm -hmm. closing the street. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if we can recoup costs, right. that would be helpful. And then yeah. going forward, as right. we do this, I and mean, when this is going to happen again. And, and here's what I say to that is that what we look through what all the documents that we have and fees that we can currently charge per THS's policies and we, 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 we charged what we had regiment fee schedules for at this time. We can revisit for these private entity type of closures how to address this going forward and bring it back to the board with some recommendations. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, I understand it's, this is down the road and, and, and 
it's good for the city, it's good for everybody. I mean, the more we can do these kinds of things, the better it is. However, uh, I still feel strongly when a private entity is benefiting from us, that that private en entity needs to pay a certain amount to make sure that whatever additional costs were covered, I mean, what happens to the motormen that don't work that day or work a half a day or whatever. I mean, there's these kinds of things we have to think about and all these costs, Sean, I think that, that you brought up and let's take a look at what that is. I'm sure the city charges a fee to close down streets and have police out there. Mm -hmm. Would I, I got to believe they do, Bob. They but, do. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I, and I don't think it's unreasonable for, for us to look at what our raw costs may be with that and come up with a policy and what we do when it's a private entity coming in like this that that is doing this for profit, obviously. They're filming the commercial that, that they make money. So I, I think from a learning experience standpoint, I think we should you know, take a look at that and, and down the road have a policy that, that makes sure we're covered so that, you know, it's a, I don't mind if it's just a straight wash, but as long as we're compensated for expenses that we incur because of this request. Yes, sir, that's a great point, and staff will come back with some recommendations to the board on that. Thank you. I, um, I, I would think that we would like it to be a robust fee not just cover our costs because we don't we don't want to make this an attractive alternative to someone and if they do um, there should be a chunk of money attached to it I, I'll I will look at some of the special events fees that the city charges and I'll share them Thank you. so you can kind of get an idea of what the city does so again I, I even Stephen I don't think is is fair not for something like this so it, it's a multi-million dollar project so yeah, yeah. Okay, I agree Thank you. Thank you for all the input. Well, I, with, I'll move uh, to accept this motion as presented with the adjusted on the date and time. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. So we have committee reports for information, compliance reports. You can take a look. Um, does anyone have any items they'd like to discuss there? Or not? You can read those. Um, old business and new. So, any old business? And new business? Please. Um, I think we've had some discussion in the past about um, uh, supplementing service during the uh, the hockey season. Obviously, the Stanley Cup playoffs were pretty robust, and we did that to some moderate success. And I was wondering if we were considering continuing that on during the hockey season, if it makes sense to take a look at that now that the team's back up and running and obviously drawing very well uh, like they did in the playoffs. Uh, I'm just curious if we've put any thought into supplementing any of that because of the, the nature of what that particular event does for us and uh, offering opportunities to the Lightning. And I, I think it would be interesting to, to actually talk to the Lightning about uh, looking at ways that we can partner with them to make that service work. In other words, if there was a, uh, let's say you put a package together where you would park in Ybor City and with buy a ticket, you get a parking pass in Ybor City, you get a pass for the streetcar, you ride the streetcar down, you come back to the, the lot instead of fighting with all the traffic down around the arena. Uh, I'd like to look at you know, opportunities to, to generate partnerships that may offer us to look at this as a real strong alternative for people coming down to the game. Um, thank you, staff has been discussing that and we actually um, had already considered that we should extend during the lightning games to the end of the game time, if you will, in case they go into overtime or whatever they call it, a shootout. I don't know enough about the sport, sorry. <laughs> I got the right terms, right? <laughs> and um, I think that's something that we strongly consider and would offer. And um, in fact, this Saturday with the Streetcar Fest, there was a game and we did tell folks, ride the streetcar during the streetcar fest, take it to the game. And we had our media person putting that out there and I think that worked out very well. Okay. Um, in regards along those lines, but not just extended hours, but what about the possibility of uh, increasing the frequency um, before and after the game? And, and to my understanding, if we want to increase the frequency, I think we can do that for you now. Um, 
we do need to understand how we're going to fund that. So if the board wants to make that assumption, we can certainly make that happen operationally. If you'd like to direct us to go there, we will. Well, I, can, I know from the times that I've been down there, I mean, the lines get long. <laughs> and so if the frequency was increased, I mean, that would be a definitely a positive thing too. Um, obviously, I wouldn't say let's just go ahead and do it, but if you guys can put some numbers together and absolutely, such. yeah, this needs to be an automatic kind of thing. I think that we just support the the lightning games absolutely because people are going to be there late, mm -hmm. and then get them out, get them back to Ybor City or wherever they need to uh, to go, um, and we also have some savings from the CSX, right? And so hopefully that can be diverted um, towards yeah. this. Absolutely, um, we'll make that happen if if. That's the consensus of the board here. We'll, we'll go ahead and increase the frequency. We could take it down to 15 minute frequency, Richie. Because that would help, right? When we're um, out What is it that now, 20? Could be done. 20, 20 now. Yeah. <clears throat> that could be done easily. Uh, as you said, we, we do support the lightnings in that we do provide extra service after the game, even if it's our regular end of service time. We do do that. Currently. So but we, yes, can, we, we could, can increase the frequency to 15 or? Yes. Okay. We can do that. Do we, you need Or we could have a dedicated car just sitting there for the end of the game down by Whiting Street and then just bring it in when the crowd breaks. We could do that too. You know, there's various ways we can do it. Uh, right, because the they may not be feels. wanting to get to the Emily. They might just want to get home from the Emily. So we can yeah. just increase the free northbound frequency at the end of the game time and have them stage and come up as the game ends. So we could do that. Hey, does the, does the service actually pay for itself? No. Do we know? We take a loss, don't we? I'm, we don't have a lot it, of money, and, and, and yeah. so I'm a little concerned <laughs> with just saying, yeah, let's let's yeah. add service and let's add cars because um, it's it's going to have to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. And um, the, I, I remember going to this the budget discussions where sure. it was very carefully balanced about how many hours we we're going to run and, and the headway to, to make the numbers work. Uh, maybe maybe a discussion with the Lightning to see if they were willing to subsidize this. Um, it, it benefits them I mean, as well. I'd be more than happy to do that but before we go ahead and say, yeah, we're going to do this. You're on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, Bob, yeah, that's great. I think I think it's a discussion item right now of, of how we work this out. There are there possibilities to do it? You know, I'm trying to think ahead and say, yeah. is it a means by which the Lightning can market a package that, makes it a package that makes it easier for people to come and find parking or have available yeah, parking. I'd like to get some kind of handle on um, w what the extra cost would be so I can go to them and say, yeah, w we can do this and it can be more convenient, however. I'd like to throw in, Ruthie, you mentioned 15, but it is, I I'm, I'm not, cost aside at the moment, is 10 minutes uh, logistically feasible as well? It is logistically feasible uh, with the assumption that we have enough motormen at that time, and mm -hmm. we do have some constraints with our contract employees, how late they can stay okay. between shifts and things. So I, I wouldn't, uh, without further research, right. Mr. Vance, I would rather come back with you with some more Okay. Feasible so numbers what on, I'd like to see, not only 15, minutes. but maybe 12 minutes then or 10, okay. what, some <laughs> sure. options. Sure, yeah. options. sure, absolutely. We okay. can come back with some options and we can come back with some cost of what the additional service will go for in, in terms of it's usually at the traditional rate as when we do a charter service. Yeah. So it would be the, the $200 plus the staging fee and it's something yeah. like $267 per hour per yeah. vehicle of extra service and don't quote me on that number I'll come back with the math on that to you it's close it's close now, now the drawback is is that if we wait to our next meeting that's two months away and how many games uh, yeah uh, uh, and I wanted to come back to the point of where we did have some of the dollars that we are savings from the CSX insurance where previous meetings it was discussed where we could put some extra service where needed in the same respect that we were doing some earlier service when the cruise ships were coming mm -hmm. in so mm -hmm. for consideration until you have a more formalized idea we could continue to support the later games continue the discussion with the Amelie and the Lightning about how they would like to support it throughout the season but I, I think the benefit of offering the later service for the immediate future until we get a more formal decision yeah if you Just could if you could get that together yes. uh, how long do you think that would take we probably could have it to you in the next week, within the week. Okay, I just that way you can get it to Bob, and Bob has yeah. something that he can take in the meantime and yep. talk to. I'll provide to it to Lena, and she'll get it out to the board members. Okay. 
Okay. Right, and that way there's some options again, whether it's a bus service or the streetcar or you know rickshaw, whatever. Uh, but mm -hmm. some options for people that are different and, costs. And that is another option to suggest um, that we could supplement in the way that we do for Gasparilla with more than just streetcar. You could add some bus bridge service, some buses leaving the Emily back into Ebor just to get the crowd out. Just the thought. Mm. Does our town trolley okay. do anything? I'm sorry? Does the trolley do anything? The in-towner only runs currently from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. and from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Monday to Friday, so it doesn't currently support the game. But it could be brought into service if they needed extra vehicles. It could be. One more question sure. while you're getting information. Could we get a current count on how many people are going to Ebor? Parking wise? For the for the lightning games because just by observation, I mean, I'm not so sure that that many are going and parking there. Yeah. I, don't know that a, I don't know that there's a good way to figure that out yeah. since so many of the parking uh, lots are um, rented out to 717, for instance, and other vendors. Mm -hmm. So we have probably four lots that have 717 that we use. And I don't think they keep track of anything other than how much money they make. They, they don't know where <laughs> these folks are going. Right. We'd probably have to analyze who gets on the car and heads south for two or three game, home games in the meantime until we meet again. Okay. My, my point is that that duration I don't think is, is that long just from observation. Mm -hmm. uh, and it may be due to the frequency and the amount of lines, but uh, it, it clears pretty rapidly. So I don't know that we would want to put on a whole other shift uh, if that's what it takes to accommodate the end of the game. So I'd just like to have that number if, there's, if we could just get ridership numbers even for, for after game. Well, that part we can do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just as an aside, uh, during Streetcar Fest with our crowding, we had about 20 to 25 Lightning fans in their blue jerseys get on at Central Ebor, which I was surprised at. They all got on there. So they probably came from dinner and then ran down to the game. That's good. Well, that would be the other thing that we could look into is partnering with some of the restaurants there for, for the yeah. tailgate, per se, before they go to the game and promote it through them as well. Thank you. See what you started. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, good, good job. Well, just to recap, I wanted to say a special thank you to Frank for pushing out streetcar selfies all weekend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, um, and to Steve for advertising and marketing and Carla and Marco for everything that they did to put the event on this past weekend. It was incredible. Um, operations was great, too. Uh, we, we definitely have some some small hurdles, but overall everything uh, went off without a hitch, and um, all of our sponsors at each of the stations were very pleased with the turnouts, and um, it was overall a great day. Yeah, with the with the Streetcar Fest and the, the Lightning game both, we had a record-breaking day, so at, at the sale it was nice. Very good. Is there any other comments or new business? All right, with that, we will uh, close our meeting. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. 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 Um, you know, what I think we need to do is I think we need to get the gem service provided. Cool. On target. Excellent, excellent. All right. We'll catch you later, sir. All right, sir. Have a good one. Uh, actually, well, have a good Halloween and Thanksgiving, maybe. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> have a good – except for you, because I'll see you. But everybody else, have a good, good – Oh. <laughs> oh, you didn't do that. Oh, you weren't. Yeah, you didn't come to our meeting. Mike, so I was aware of that. Oh, Shannon didn't do that too. She went to the very hard office on Monday. So I just think about rushing around today as a meeting. Yeah. Well, I came when I came here. I was thinking it was in the other uh, this building, but the other side. So I was, I was about to go up the wrong stairs. Yeah. <laughs> All right.
Guys, y'all have a great Halloween and Thanksgiving. Ruthie, I'll see you probably. Well, I won't see you before Halloween. But guys, adios. I'm going to do my key. Oh, there you go. How are you? Do you mind me asking what was your...